Welcome to the first show of a brand new year. Let's hope it has a bit more life, a bit more jaan than the last show of last year. Kya batao, saal bhi to kuch ajeeb sa tha. You know, let's hope that this year is full of joy, hope, happiness, getting things back to normal, whatever normal is. But saying that, we've only just started this year and look at the mess that the world's in at the moment. Which mess are you talking about? Well, here in London, one in every 30 people has a covid virus which is a really frightful fact you know the hospitals just can't cope and in america well where do i start with america it's atrocious scenes in capitol hill the insurrection that followed trump being suspended from twitter it's all happening right now yeah it is quite scary actually i think what's more scary that is scary but what's even more scary is that over 70 million people voted for trump that is scary Welcome to the Shabby and Man podcast. We're partners, parents, podcasters, broadcasters and everything else in between. Now, we talk about social media, won't we? Social media is the voice of the world right now. But will it be the same now that Trump is not on Twitter? Mm. Uh what will his preferred platform be now? He's not on Facebook or Instagram either actually. I th- I personally think he'll probably go to Parler, which is quite a right-wing app. But uh, it remains to be seen. Oh, it reminds me that you know people are leaving certain social media sites in droves like people are leaving WhatsApp and going to um, Telegram and Signal I think is the other one. Would you define WhatsApp as a social media site? Not really. Yeah, that's where most people get the information from. Or the or, University of WhatsApp. Yeah, all the all the WhatsApps that do the rounds, especially yeah. election times and all. Yeah. No matter what country you are, which country you're in. Um I'm and I think um our parents generation mm. are going to find it that much harder to leave whatsapp yeah I, i'm talking about generations our kids are never going to go on facebook they 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 just laugh at us and say why are you on facebook not that i am but let's just say that you and say some of your um friends it's your preferred choice yeah it is i think uh, all these social media platforms have to do with your personality people who are extremely impulsive then many many people who just want attention many people who just want to say uh, controversial things and i will count the present american president for at least for another few days in that category you know those who want to be sensationalists they often prefer twitter those of us who like to have a little ramble and look back and you know really take our time over telling a story and reminiscing and posting photographs we flock to either twitter or facebook and so i think it's personality driven that's what it is and those who want to dance backwards tiktok yeah well there you go tiktok so it is but i think the world has now come to realize that social media is a beast that you cannot ignore even if you don't warm to it even if you say nothing people are probably on these platforms even if they are one of those silent people who are just looking at what the world is talking about and posting but uh, the the american those who have those who have private accounts private accounts and that following you, that you can't see yeah and uh, the, the the american presidential election the debate the run up the fallout the, the aftermath all of it played out in the full gaze of the world not so much on television or radio or in the newspapers but on social media and so i think it's one of those things i mean it's hard to imagine that these things are only about a decade old right twitter is about what twitter celebrated its 10th anniversary of i think that was instagram instagram twitter they've all been like yeah, 10 yeah. 12 years yeah. right facebook maybe a little longer than that but It's really hard to imagine a world without any of these things because these have become your main sources of information. And uh, for the new young generation, look at our kids. Yeah. They don't watch TV. Yeah. They're on totally on everything for them is on YouTube, mm. etc. Yeah. But and saying that, no truth be told, yeah. the other day there was some big story. I went to bed so you told me about it in the morning. I had no idea what was going on. But you said to me that our 16-year-old came and told you about it half an hour before even you found out on Twitter. So even these kids whatever their their network is I think his preferred platform at the moment is Reddit Reddit probably so I'm, they, I'm not yeah. quite sure myself but saying that these kids are very tech savvy yeah. something that we weren't we've had to learn the hard way yeah. because look at this lockdown they're um, on Zoom they've uh, Microsoft uh, Teams Teams mm. as part of their schoolwork yeah. they're actually having live lessons yeah 
one of them, the eldest one, mm. is about to give exams next week. Yeah. Proper exams. Mock exams. But uh, you're right. Proper in an exam scenario where he's been told when to start, when to finish. The entire timetable has been given to us. Are they going to be monitored on the web camera? It's quite I'm scary times. Quite sure. yeah. yeah. So it is one of those things where, um, you know, we've the hashtag new normal has been around for almost a year now since we went into lockdown the first time but now it is actually dawning on us that it's coming close to a year since we've been you know working remotely learning remotely and not in our case our son taking exams remotely saying that this is going to be for for us londoners this is going to be lockdown three yeah and i'm finding at this time 3.0 as they're saying 3.0 yeah is that your tech Yes. Speaking. Yeah. Where did you pick that up from? Everybody, the hashtag is 3.0. I thought Twitter would tell you. I didn't know that actually. Mm-hmm. I call it, I'm old school. I call it lockdown 3. Uh, but so, bar karna pad hai. Uh, is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. So lockdown 3, uh, uh, I'm finding it that much harder. Hmm. You're not. You know, uh, uh, this, is, this is what I understand where people say that, you know, they feel this loneliness and there's mental health problems. I can understand why. Mm. Uh, and I think what worsens it, what, what makes it even harder is the fact that the end is in sight with the vaccination. What is hard is that the end is no, in sight. No, it's the final wait. It's the final stretch. Mm. You know, it's the final mile. It's so like, that like, when you do a, like when you do a marathon, you, yeah. know, you hit the wall yeah. and you find it that much harder. I would have thought, I I disagree completely. I feel that we are almost coming up to a year now since we first went into lockdown. This time round, I know it's harder, but at least we've been through it before. We know that there's not going to be any shortage. The last time people didn't know whether uh, we had to hoard food and dry food and pasta and toilet roll and all of that. It happened all around the world, right? So this time we know what the deal is. We know what we need to do to be safe. We know how we need to go out only if it's absolutely essential. We know how remote learning works. Everybody has adapted. And I think that much as I appreciate what you're saying, that, you know, the loneliness and the anxiety and all of that, almost 12 months of that, this is when it's coming to a peak. But I would say that people who are feeling anxious and lonely in the first lockdown, do you think they're worse off in the third? I See, this is where I totally disagree, disagree with you because I think even though, as I said, the vaccines are coming, it's no panacea, you know. Mm. And um, this um, the mental health and the anxiety is just... It's, the mental health is actually compounding people's anxiety. It's making it worse, I think. Mm. That just waiting for that final... Yeah, but then that's just a general to, statement, to I think, through. about the world waiting for this to end. All of us are tired, you know. Whether we have uh, extra issues that we are grappling with, I know that the, vul- and the vulnerable and the, and the fragile need an extra bit of help. I know this time us. there's, there's not think, the huge cues and all. I yeah, agree with you there. Yeah. It's easier that way. Yeah, a lot of stuff because we've been through, because we've been doing this for nearly 11, 12, almost coming up to 11, 12 months now. So I think we know what the deal is, right? But yeah, the scary bit is that everybody thought the va- vaccine was going to be like the light at the end of the tunnel and it's going to happen very soon. It that is happen- happening. It is happening It is soon. happening. They're rolling it out. But then again, you at the same time, you hear stories about the variant and a variant in South Africa and a variant in London and... You know, so it oh, seems like something you know, you which will take, take a, a long time to die. Well, down. obviously, when you have to vaccinate the whole planet, yeah, it's not an overnight job. Yeah, and there's also that whole thing about whether there should be two doses, yeah, or just give everyone one dose one first, dose. Yeah. so that more people can have it. Yeah, you know, if there is at all a silver lining to this, uh, a lot of people, I think we would agree to that as well, and a lot of people have said that because we were all forced to stay home, stay indoors, and life changed drastically and dramatically when lockdown first happened a lot of people have ended up saving a lot of money because we didn't go on holidays we're not eating out we're not traveling that much and so i think the only thing that we can say only good that has come off it is the fact that i think we've been forced to make a few savings and hopefully we are using them wisely now to you know uh, i mean get all the gadgets that we need to make sure that the kids are online and doing all the stuff that well, they're doing i totally disagree with you Why each, that? each t- to his own mm. you're saying lots of people are saving money yeah i'm saying that so many people have gone bankrupt have got no money to feed anyone have got no job have lost everything in their hand but the government has got a scheme in place to support them right not that i'm uh, a pro or anti what the government is doing but you know let's not forget that britain is a welfare state let's not forget that no you're just talking about britain i'm talking about around the world yeah it's around, very of course, very hard times. of course yeah that's true that's true 
but you know you've got to find something to pin your hopes on and something to look forward to and i think therefore you will see that while people are also complaining about oh my god almost coming up to a year a lot of people are now suddenly also looking forward to miss that holiday when when, when can we go that go back to that place we have i haven't seen my mom and dad in a year now my kids haven't seen their my parents for two years now so, so what's the first time you know, face time is different okay so you know think now we're thinking about when will we see our parents again when can we hug our parents and our brothers and sisters and our friends again so i think you as you're rightly saying it is a home stretch but it affects different people differently while you think it's harder for you it's proving to be harder for you i think that this time round i'm much more sorted i feel that i'm much calmer and much more in control of what my lockdown looks like i'll tell you one thing i did enjoy was actually enjoyed spending time in the kitchen cooking mm. uh going back and uh, revisiting old memories playing mm. the guitar catching mm. up with old friends i enjoyed that yeah. i mean there was a sad thing that um, last week uh, the great albert rue passed away yeah the great french chef here who was i think him and his brother um, michael uh, michel rue mm. they were the first ones to um, get three michelin stars in this country mm. um, late 60s early 70s yeah. and they maintained it the great chefs so what the memories it brought back was it brought back my um, hotel management days that um, we were all sent out on placements and one of my uh, two of my friends went the chef way mm. and he one of them he got a placement with the rue brothers in uh, one was uh, two three restaurants that waterside in and um, le gavroche which yeah. is in uh, mayfair mm. which is one with the michelin stars so he trained with them and you know those days gordon ramsay and uh, marco pierre white had just come out of um, apprenticeships with the rue brothers mm. so it was i remember it's that i mean yeah i mean it's sad that albert rue passed away but i'm remembering those days i thought i'd get back in touch with these friends because yeah. they've all gone on to become great chefs i went the other side i went the hotel management side mm. you could choose looking at the tributes that people like jamie oliver anybody who's in the hospitality business you know so many people have uh, wrote so fondly about Albert Rue saying that you know even those who hadn't worked with him saying what an inspiration he was and how he set the standard so high and how he was apparently a really nice man because a lot of these you name two people who are known for their temper right Gordon Ramsay and Marco Pierre White both they were the bad boys of gastronomy but um uh, everybody saying how Albert Rue was like the nicest person you could work for but tell me like I've you say that your friends went and did an apprenticeship so where you got an apprenticeship did that depend on how good you were so was that like a big deal or yeah it was was about these people uh, no, taking I mean, young chefs and anyway. they took young chefs and many chefs passed through their doors yeah. and some achieved greatness yes. great greatness but it's it's good to have a classical french training of basics to know the basics yeah which is more than you know steak tata and french frites whatever you you think french food is what is your french food um, take i'm not sure growing up in india you know when i when you look at i mean i know that gastronomy the home of gastronomy is france and uh, i would say that growing up in india i've never really been into i've never experienced french fine dining as it were but i do know of course i think the french patisserie would be my favorite my go to would be creme brulees and soufflés and all your um, oh, basic stuff as well all your basic croissants stuff. and croissants. Mac- macarons yeah macarons all of those things and you know either you would have the odd quiche lorraine i don't think i've ever made a quiche lorraine but these are things that i'm familiar with you know what i thought you'd say what? i thought you said something like ratatouille ratatouille again yeah it's a it's a soup right ratatouille I've had it many times I'm sure but I think I've had a french onion soup more often than I've had ratatouille. Right. So we've had different elements of french cuisine but I don't think I uh, either have been exposed to or I would warm to french gastronomy in terms of fine dining you no, know. But you know some things that you eat every day. Hmm. Just have a french twist to them like uh, I'm trying to think of something like croque monsieur is basically yeah. cheese toast. Yeah. You know mm. a luxury cheese toast. Yeah. and um, even cockavin you know like cock- we don't correct. we don't call it that but obviously these are dishes that we all eat in various forms but yeah my friend knowledge of french food is fairly basic um, like, do you know what a buff bourguignon is is it beef from burgundy <laughs> Well, it is. It is. See, there you go. You must have heard, heard me say it. Ah, I must have heard me say it. Right. So there you go. That is that is your um that is your story on um, French cuisine. No, French cuisine on, going back on, to on your... the great Albert Rue who passed away this week as well. Yeah. I was looking through some of my stuff the other day. That's another thing that lockdown has given us a lot of time on hand. And I came across 
two tickets to Madam Butterfly that I would have seen around this time last year. I was meant to go with my friend. And I was thinking about how ironic it is that I'd never been to opera. You tell me that because your auntie is Italian. I was going to say, you won't believe this. I've probably seen three operas in my life. Yeah. And that's because but, your but aunt, chachi my, is my, Italian. My, yes. My auntie is Italian. Yeah. Uh, not that Ita you have English to be Italian. Italian. It, yeah. You don't have to be Italian to go yeah. to an opera. Yeah. But so weird you said that. Hmm. You weren't, you weren't going to see Man Butterfly with me. No, I it know, was with another friend of mine. Which you never no. told me about. Yes. But one, one of the few operas I've seen yeah. is Man and Butterfly. It's Puccini, isn't it? Mm. Is yeah. it Puccini? It is. And uh, not that I remember it mm. or can remember anything about it, mm. but I remember seeing the few I've seen. You know, I've seen Carmen, I've seen Man Puccini, I've seen Porgy and mm. Bess. The ad, can I just say, the ad on the underground was just so beautiful. I think it said something about how the most beautiful smiles can sometimes conceal the most cruel heart. It was something like that. But, but so, where were you, out of interest, where were you going to go and see? It, it was the ENO, English National um, Opera okay. in Leicester Square, right? Correct. Just behind Leicester I, Square. I, I've seen it just around the corner in Leicester so Square. I was going with this girlfriend of mine who watches a lot of opera, and I told her, look, I'm a complete, I'm a total novice when it comes to operas. And your, opera, your opera knowledge is from Lagan? It's from um, Lagan, is hardly an opera, but yeah, yes, Bollywood operas. But I said that, you know, this story sounds like it's something. It sounds like a story that I would like to watch. And so we booked our tickets. We did everything one week before we were due to go and watch it. London went into lockdown. This was last year, end of March. So, um, yeah, I was looking at those tickets and thinking, again, like I said, because the end is in sight, it could be two two months, six months, maybe even to the end of the year. But I think people have started making plans one more time about what they would like to do safely wisely things that they've really missed all of last year well that should we say goodbye i think we should should we remind everybody where we are streaming or oh, people know already right you think you're netflix where we're streaming yeah that's true where we're available on uh, where podcast apps available on. all your podcast apps that you type in yes. google apple spotify yeah and the others yeah so until as, we... as soon as we do our homework and find out what they are we shall tell you Unless you tell us first. Unless you tell us first. If you want to tell us, you can tell us via Twitter, Shabin Man at Twitter. And Instagram. Sh Shabin Man at Instagram. Yeah. Until we meet again here on this podcasting platform, look after yourself. Bye-bye now. Bye.